Welcome to another edition of Lodge's Cockpit, where we're going to take you on a flight and give you a bird's eye view of what the men and women of Lodge's Field have been up to. So take your seat, buckle up, and enjoy your flight. My name is Ricky Baptista, and I'm the Chief of Public Affairs for the 65th Air Base Group. In the cockpit today, we have some two VIPs. We have the 65th Air Base Group Deputy Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Rhett Butler, and the 65th Air Base Group First Sergeant, Senior Master Sergeant, Travis Rucker. Gentlemen, thank you for coming to the cockpit today. Thanks for having us. <laughs> awesome. Colonel Butler, we've uh, gone into 2021. Uh, we're in February right now. Uh, what can you tell us, what can you tell the group, uh, the expectations we have for the airmen and what, uh, what expectations the airmen should have for the group in the following months? Well, one of the things that's uh, on my mind is we're in the middle of this exercise. Today will be the last day and, and we've been doing a lot of great work there uh, with our Portuguese counterparts. Uh, Colonel Azaniera mentioned that this was the first time since 2012 that, that he'd seen something this integrated for both sides. So uh, kudos to, to both sides on that. We've been working things like uh, active shooter drills that, that there is great win-win training for their security forces uh, alongside of ours. We've been having the gate runner uh, situation that again, the quick response and, and everybody working together is in a manner that they have not seen before. It's just wonderful to see that. Uh, and this is all building up to, we have a, uh, a field certification coming up for the Portuguese Air Force side that will be in the spring. So this exercise is really just preparation in coordination so that we can knock that out of the park and, and provide again another win-win on integrated operations. So that'll be sometime in the April, May time frame. So something to look forward to there. It'll be a, a major incident out on the airfield and, and all the lessons that we've learned from these great opportunities thus far. Another neat event on, uh, on the morale and welfare side is we're coordinating for an Easter activity. Again, joint, similar to kind of what we did with the Halloween. We're trying to get something for the kids and the families here on the base. Going to be in coordination with uh, arts and crafts type of thing, involve an Easter egg hunt, representing a little bit of the cultural backgrounds from both nations. So really looking forward to those activities and just a, a real positive outlook. 20 was kind of a tough year with the COVID situation and we're getting our vaccines and, and trying to free things up so we can really have a great 21. It falls in line with you, Safi's, uh, one of our prime directives, right, General Harigian's partnerships and readiness. So these exercises and combined operations with our host nation are a perfect example of, uh, of filling that requirement. Uh, Shirt, how are you? Good, Ricky. Very good. So you're uh, you're probably one of the longest serving U.S. military members uh, currently at Lodges Field. You've been here for almost two years. Crazy to hear that, just two years and <laughs> having that title, but uh, it is true. <laughs> so um, as I mentioned before, we're in February right now. We're in the challenging months here. Um, a lot of our viewers that have been stationed at Lodges Field uh, know what it's like January, February, March. Uh, do you have any hints, any tidbits, any piece of advice that you can provide to our airmen in terms of, you know, how to, how, how to take these challenges head on, how to overcome them, you know, things to do during this time uh, for them to be successful. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, first and foremost is perspective, right? Um, sometimes if you, it, it can here, it can get kind of funny that uh, the wind kicks up uh, pretty robustly. Let's be honest, uh, sometimes 80 mile an hour winds can kind of catch you off guard um, and the rain comes in and such, but uh, it always, it always helps if you keep perspective, if you get down a little bit, is to hop onto your phone or call a friend and be like, so what's the weather in Chicago right now? And uh, that'll that'll straighten you out real quick, right? Call over to Ramstein, hey, how's the weather? And they'll be like, forget about my weather. How can I get out to lodges? Do you guys need any any support out there, TDY? Yeah, uh, this morning. yeah I, don't, I don't mind three COVID tests, no problem. I'll come out and help you guys. So um, so perspective would be my first thing is to, to remind everyone. Um, it, you know, it's, it's beautiful here all time of year. I mean, that's, that's really my take on it. Now I understand other people uh, might come back and say, oh yeah, but it's kind of rough. I got it, I understand that. So go to, go to step two after that. If perspective isn't doing it for you, then take it for what it is at the moment and see how you can capitalize on it. So if you're looking out right now and there's not much going on and island life 
is until robust, obviously, with what we're dealing with with the pandemic. But in general, in the winter time here in the Azores, things slow down, usually in, in preparation for the summer when uh, when it's a blast. Um, but take that downtime to catch up on those things that you need to catch up on, whether it's your own professional development, whether it is uh, your own life goals, right? Take that time to, uh, to figure out what it is you want, not only for this year, but say the next five years. And, and really kind of chart that out a little bit when you have that quiet time to really focus on it. Uh, because, you know, once things kick back up again, once you get busy, it's really tough to, to chart that out methodically because you're getting pulled in all different directions. And you're going to wish you had taken that time, capitalized on that time you have to really thought things through. And uh, that's, that has served me well in my career, is, is recognizing the time period I'm in and capitalizing on it for what it was at the time. So um, I think if you keep those things in mind, uh, people will find that the, the time here is going to fly by no matter what happens. Agreed, agreed. Very good, very good answer. I like that. Uh, giving people an opportunity to understand exactly, you know, what their situation is. Hey, analyze that first before you go out and, um, you know, using the word complaining. Uh, before you go out and complain because you can't do this or the sun isn't out, you know, let's really look at um, our reality here and what the... Uh, what it is, what are my boundaries, real real boundaries. That's that's awesome uh, and some good news. Uh, Colonel Butler, you know, talking about time here, this really isn't your first time at Lodges Field, correct? I mean, you've been here before, right? Even may, may have been a little bit of time, but can you tell us a little bit uh, about that? Sure. So I had the fortunate opportunity to do some language training. So I, I'm a Portuguese linguist and uh, have been working on that for almost 30 years now. I, I picked up Portuguese down in Brazil and uh, have been trying to ca catch on to the continental version for, for some time now. And in 2013, uh, the Culture and Language Center said, hey, as a, as a LEAP member, Language Enabled Airmen Program, which thumbs up to that, it's a great, great program if, if anyone's interested in languages. I also happen to have been in charge of that for a couple of years, so I might be a little biased. But uh, great program putting volunteer linguists in opportunities to excel. And so they said, hey, let's, let's adapt your Brazilian Portuguese. And, and a lead into that would be, why don't you visit this base out in uh, Lodges in the Azores? And I looked on the map and was like, that's kind of neat. It's, there's this island chain out in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, that, that's got to be pretty cool. And they said, yeah, the Portuguese Air Force is going to host you for a week out there. And then we'll send you on up to Porto, and northern Portugal, to get some training so that you'll understand continental. And then just as the top it all off, we'll send you to the embassy in Lisbon for a week. So that was my month long opportunity uh, going on seven, eight years ago now. And, and what a great experience it was. My, my, as I came in here, getting to, to see this from the Portuguese Air Force perspective, I, I met with the wing commander at the time, and, but the rest of the time I was hosted by one after another of the Portuguese Air Force. I got to hear the local accents and, and I, at the time I was surprised at how my understanding had dwindled. I couldn't understand a lot of what was going on. I didn't find out till I got to, to uh, Porto when the ling linguist instructors explained. They said, well, you gotta remember the Azorian accent is a little bit different than what you've ever heard in Brazil and even different than what we have in the continental version. And so they decided they would teach me what proper Portuguese, according to them, sounded like. And of course, it, it, it was rivaled Lisbon's. They're like, ours is much better up here. So, uh, so interesting. They tried to help me out there for two weeks of training. Then I went down to Lisbon and they said, no, no, forget all that up there. We'll teach you proper Portuguese here in Lisbon. And uh, I got to work there in the embassy with their public affairs. Uh, a dream come true, really, to get the chance to come back here and work in a longer term. To me, my goal is leave something better than you found it. And so that's been something I've tried to do. And, and again, I think we've, we've got a lot of great things going on, as you've heard, opportunities and, and uh, just a strategic location. And it's been my pleasure to enjoy trying to make the most of the time here. Awesome, awesome. Sure, a question for you now. Um, let's say we have an individual that's interested in uh, becoming a shirt, or they, they're, uh, you know, you've been able to influence many lives, and, they, and they're, they're thinking, hey, how can I do that? How can I be, um, you know, like senior rucker? What, what, what processes? What's the plan? How do I go about doing that? And is there any advice that you can give out to folks that are interested in, uh, in becoming a diamond? Sure, sure. That's um, it. <sighs> There is no one prescription for it, right? I mean, uh, first thing, when well, first sergeants, we get around to get around the council table, we all realize there was no one set path to get here by any means. Uh, everybody had their own path to get there. 
um, but those paths do have similar attributes, right? Um, and it doesn't mean, and I really want to, uh, I really want to drive home this point. It doesn't mean a perfect career. It doesn't mean a flawless career. It doesn't mean you've done everything right up until the point you speed your way to master sergeant, and now I'm going to put on my diamond. Um, in fact, I would say that folks would be best served um, by. I'm not trying to say mess up. I'm not trying to say put some, you know take some flawed decisions and throw them on the resume and everything. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, challenge yourself. It's okay to make mistakes along the way, uh, but more importantly, take those opportunities to learn from uh, people that do unfortunately make mistakes to see how you take care of people in that situation, how you get them through that, how you, um, you know, give them your arm, act as a good wingman to get them back on their way to what they need to do. Um, in the way that they need to. And you can learn from other people's mistakes without having to take, make them your own, right? Um, and that's, that's the part that I find a lot of people realizing that while they were so busy making sure they did everything correctly and making sure that they had the best possible setup to get themselves in a position to become a first sergeant, they really forgot to take a close look around them on their way up to see how everyone else was dealing with these situations coming up up into it and then at that point they wish man I, I sure wish I had paid a little more attention and took away some more experiences and lessons learned before I am in the hot seat because once you're in the hot seat that's it <laughs> you are you're the one who's got to come up with the answers and you're the ones expected to have the answers um, and so obviously nobody can get into that seat and be ready for everything but it sure is nice to think well I've got at least I've got a a laundry list and a folder full of uh, other issues I've dealt with that I can draw upon. I've, I, for one, was lucky enough for you know for my path is that I got to be a superintendent two or three times before I became a first sergeant of uh, smaller and then medium-sized squadrons. So I had ended up dealing with a lot of folks that were in trouble. I had also had to deal with uh, management um, expectations, dealing with commanders, obviously, and uh, taking care and carrying out their intent, and uh, and then all the administrative issues that come along with being a superintendent, manpower, how to, uh, uh, manpower is one of the big ones, right? But then also organizing the entire structure of whatever squadron you're in or flight you're in to, uh, to execute properly. So all that stuff greatly helped me when I became a first sergeant. Um, but it doesn't mean that's, that's what everybody else has got to do, right? It's just whatever position you're in, capitalize on it in every way you can think of. Um, and that'll help immensely when you, when you get there. So one of the biggest benefits is the experience that you brought and one of the things that people can do is just learn as much as they possibly can because you never know when you're going to reuse it uh, regardless of how unique or small uh, your section flight squadron is you know you may be able to share that with other folks and bring those best practices and and help folks so um, be a good be a good wingman is what I'm hearing in terms of being a good first sergeant so that's a uh, that's a great example and, um, thank you very much for sharing that oh yeah absolutely and and and, and you bring up a great, great point there too of shadow shadow people as much as you can do as much on the job training as you can prior to getting there um, uh, folks are always happy to, to have a helping hand on things and, um, and and you'll get a great view on what it actually looks like that and then you'll know whether this is truly something you want to do or something that maybe you were infatuated with the idea but perhaps not in love with the reality um, all good things to do. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for showing it, for showing up at the cockpit. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the community? Oh, so, no, no, it's, uh, yeah, after, I mean, for myself, after being here almost two years, uh, I can't say enough about the community, the culture. Uh, everyone on this island has been such an uh, incredible host. Um, took care of my family when they were able to come out in, in a manner that it's hard for me to describe how welcoming, how warm it was. Um, and I just strongly advise anyone, uh, you know, my opinion, best remote in the Air Force, hands down. And uh, if it scares you away a little bit thinking your families can't come out, they, they certainly can. Understand with the pandemic, it's a little harder right now. But when things get back to normal and we do get that way, um, I can't stress enough uh, what a fantastic experience this was for my family and uh, for myself here. And um, yeah, I can't wait to come visit someday again and see all of you again. I would echo the same sentiments. Uh, again, that's all the things that I'd glimpsed uh, so many years ago during my one little week. I thought, oh, what a, what a dream it would be to be able to return and, and be in the leadership somehow. And 
and be careful what you ask for, but in, in some ways, dream big, because what an opportunity to be able to come back here for an entire year. Uh, granted, I wish it was more, but uh, it has just been wonderful. Uh, the things I would encourage folks is, is take advantage of the opportunities. There's so much to do here, to see here. Every day is, is a gift and the work things, that's important, we'll get the work done. The people, we take care of the people and they'll take care of the mission. But if you haven't taken the chance to see this beautiful island and the culture, and even in the midst of COVID, which I've been a little disappointed because of the lack of bullfighting and this carnival and things that have been uh, restricted, but we understand why. And like you said, I can't wait to come back, be able to bring my family uh, and enjoy more of the hospitality of the great people of this island. It's, it's a, truly a dream assignment. Well, that's wonderful to hear, and we will be uh, arms open, ready to welcome you back, um, even not as a military member, if you want to come back as a retiree and enjoy what the island has to offer. Uh, and we're hoping that the, uh, the island gets back to uh, normal operating business uh, very soon, uh, as the rest of the world is. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, hope you had a good flight. And uh, to all of our viewers, uh, that's our flight for today. Thank you for joining us, and uh, get ready for our next flight. Take care.